Receiving simulator transmission. Uploading transmitted feed. Initializing playback sequence. All right, Cypher, we're ready. Hey everyone, Cypher here, and welcome back to Cypher Plays Pokemon Ruby Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we faced down the leader, the gym leader of the Lava Ridge Town Gym, Flannery, and her fire type Pokemon, where we had a rather easy time, though we did have one close call when Merc got hit by a body slam. We then uh, went around Hoenn, first making our way to Route 111 and its desert to pick up a fossil and a new encounter. And then after that, we brought that fossil back to Rustboro City to revive it, which got us adamantine the Anorith. After that, we returned here to Pellberg City and cleared out the gym trainers of the Pellberg City Gym. Today, we will be challenging the Pellberg City Gym Leader, our father, Norman. And honestly, this is a fight that I am a bit worried about, even though I have prepared. Because it is, if anything else in this game, the midsection is considered the hardest part. And there is a very good reason for that. Uh, this gym leader in particular, while he only has three Pokemon in this game, they are Pokemon with pretty much beyond legendary stats. As such, I have been putting in a lot of work training up and thinking about who I wanted to bring in, and I have a team that I believe can get me victory in this run. I had much thoughts and I'm gonna basically just go over my strategy right now at least with the current team members as you can clearly see I've changed around my team quite a bit both from the sidebar or when we loaded in and as you're seeing now I have two Pokemon with guts in Cujo and Lombardi who are already pre-burned and you might be wondering why I have Forest here at such low HP well I'll just say it right now, his ability Overgrow only kicks in when he's at a third of his maximum HP or less, and I wanted it just in case I need to bring him in and launch a rather devastating Grass-type move, because from training up, he's gotten his signature move, Leaf Blade. In the base game, this would be 70 power and have a high, a high critical hit ratio, Thanks to the Universal Pokemon Randomizer bringing moves up to their Gen 5 power, it is now a 90 power move, so... Going to be pretty much the hardest thing that he can hit with, especially with that Miracle Seed. I also brought in Adamantine, who I've said before is a Nuzlocke... Uh, well, I guess the greatest boon to any Nuzlocke because of her ability Battle Armor will make it so that she can easily block any critical hits, and from training her up, I've gotten Protect on her, which will be rather critical if she comes into fight for this gym battle. Beyond that, I brought in Charlie simply because of her Steel Typing, it'll allow her to resist any Normal Type moves and any Dark Type moves, because the Pokémon in this gym all have Normal and Dark Type moves. We'll get into that as we get into the actual fight. and. I mainly brought her in to basically be able to soak up any damage that uh, Norman will dish out at us. This is kind of a play to my first run, where I had gotten an air on at Granite Cave, which was quad resistant to normal type moves and resistant to dark type moves, so it was basically able to take care of everything. If you do have an air on, it's probably the best thing that you could. Uh, bring into this fight while it's not very strong on its own unless you use the universal Pokemon randomizer to lower its evolution requirement from 32 to 30 It can be rather solid because it's typing enables it to resist pretty much everything and It's move and it can learn some pretty good moves between the rock tune TM that we got from Roxanne its own Mud Slap, Iron Defense, and Metal Claw, it can pretty much deal with anything that these Pokemon on Norman's team can dish out. But anyway, enough 
talking about strategy, let's get right on into this. Hmm. So you did get four gym badges. Fine. As prom as I promised, we will have a Pokemon battle. Cypher. I'm so happy that I can have a real battle with my own child. But a battle is a battle. I will do everything in my power as a gym leader to win. Cypher, you'd better give it your best shot, too. Alright, so our gym leader and father, Norman, he is one tough opponent. You do not want to come at him half-heartedly, which is why I'm starting off with Cujo. With his Guts ability and his Burn, this is pretty much the best opening strategy I have. He's going to start off with a level 28 Slacking, which is notoriously underleveled for uh, what its evolution requirements are. But anyway, its four moves are Yawn, Encore, Facade, and Faint Attack. The usual gimmick for this guy is that he's going to open up with a Yawn to slowly put you to sleep. And honestly, because I don't have, because I have uh, Cujo burned, he's not going to be able to put him to sleep, so he's probably going to go for a facade. Now, slacking has beyond legendary stats. Like, it, I believe its stat total, or rather its base stat total, is higher than Groudon, so gives you an idea of what you're dealing with if you know Pokemon pretty well, but... Uh, the one saving grace is that Slacking can only attack every other turn, so the first turn it can attack, second turn it'll loaf around, third turn it'll be able to attack again and continue in that pattern until it's either defeated or wins the battle. So I'm going to go with my best bet, Low Kick, because, that sh because Slacking is also a very heavy Pokemon, so hopefully we can tank the hit. Okay, thank goodness. And one Low Kick should take out Slacking. Okay, that's good. Now, if he had crit and gotten a high roll, I don't think Kuja would have survived this match, but thankfully he didn't crit. Because I have the experience here on Lombardi, he also gets a level up. Now he's going to bring in his Vigor off. This is the pre-evolved form of slacking. It's much weaker, but it doesn't have Truant, so it's... A bit harder to deal with. I'm going to quickly swap out to Charlie here. Because this thing likes to use Slash, its other moves are Encore, Yawn, and Faint Attack. Or actually, I don't think it has Yawn, I think it has Facade and Faint Attack, but it's a pretty devastating Pokemon to deal with. I'm gonna quickly go over to my items and use. Uh, super Potion. Actually, let's use a Soda Pop that'll fully heal Cujo. And we're basically just gonna have uh, Charlie deal with this, and man, it's getting pretty lucky with those crits. Let's use Agility, just to get us a bit faster. And now that you've weakened us, okay, you've triggered our berry. I did put an orange berry on Charlie just so she could recover a little bit of HP. Let's try using our own air cutter against this thing. Okay, no dice. I think I'll use a soda pop now just to heal up Charlie. I could bring Cujo in now that he's fully healed up, but I don't want to risk getting a critical hit on him. So we're probably just going to have uh, Charlie take care of this for the most part. Hopefully we can get a critical hit. And I think I'll actually just use another agility. I know that I'm already faster than this slacking, but... Uh, I mean this vigor off, but I want to be prepared for his ace Pokemon, so let's just use two agilities. See if we get crit, and then if we do, we'll heal up. Uh, facade is a rather dangerous move. It's 70 base power, so it doesn't seem like it's all that much. But any move that gives it a stat, that gives the user a status condition is one you want to avoid. Which is kind of why I br didn't bring Urbosa to this fight. 
If you burn, per paralyze, or poison any of these Pokemon, their facade's power will double to 140, so it's very tricky to deal with. And of course I miss. Well, Air Cutter is only 95% accurate. Uh, let's... I know I'm probably being a bit ridiculous healing, but I don't want to lose Charlie. Okay, let's try another Air Cutter. Alright, and now we get the critical hit. Okay. Well, that takes care of that. Which just le- oh! And we're learning Steel Wing. Okay, that's actually a pretty uh, good timing. Let's replace the, that Peck attack. Because now we can possibly raise our defense with it, although it's only a 10% chance. And his final Pokémon is another Slacking. This one is much stronger. Uh, I believe it has the moves... Uh, uh, focus Punch, Facade, Feign Attack, and uh, Slack Off. So Slack Off will be able to heal it. Uh, Feign Attack will never miss, but it is a dark type move and goes off of his lesser special attack. Uh, Facade, as I've stated, is a powerful normal type move, especially if the user is suffering from a status condition. And then Focus Punch is a 150 power fighting type move that takes two turns to go off, but you can't be hit during it. So I want to make sure that I actually hit, so let's use Swift this turn. And I probably should have not uh, allowed... Uh, I probably shouldn't have had uh, Charlie speed up now that I think about it, because if we go first and he uses Focus Punch, then he won't uh, get his Focus broken from us hitting him, so I'm gonna actually switch to Adam and Tyne. Because now uh, we're not in any danger of any of any critical hits, and we can just try and slow him down. And I probably should have gone for scratch there. Oh well. Okay, at least we hit with Rock Tomb, so we're pretty solid now. Now Adam and Tyne can't really do much damage just because she's rather weak, but uh, we can Try and slow this slacking down as best we can with Rock Tomb. And maybe get a crit, I don't know. Uh, every other turn, slacking will loaf around, and then we can use Protect to guard against... Oh shoot, I probably shouldn't have done that. Well, here's hoping that that hit. Okay. Thank goodness, okay. Well, now that he's loafing around, we'll just use another Rock Tomb. Maybe we can slow him down some more. And I'll use Protect again. Okay, good. So, yeah. If you have Protect, it pretty much... Uh, neutralizes the threat of the final slacking, but if you don't, it can be a bit harrowing. And I think we're just about done. He'll probably use a Hyper Potion. I think he has at least two of them, so let's try going for a Metal Claw. This will have a 10% chance of raising our attack if we hit, so it's probably the best move we could go for right now. Okay, now... Let's just use another Rock Tomb. I believe the healing turn uses up his attacking turn, so he'll be loafing this time. And now let's try a Protect. Okay, good. A little slower than the first Slacking, but... With how much power this stronger Slacking is packing, I don't want to risk possibly getting hit by it. And we dropped its speed a lot of stages, so now we can, I think, protect, dodge that focus punch. And then we can uh, bring in Cujo. 
who is all fresh from having been healed up while Charlie was getting attacked by that Vigoroth. And now that he's... Now that we've slowed down the slacking speed quite a bit, we can use Low Kick to finish this off and not have any issues. All right. Player defeated leader Norman. I... I can't. I can't believe it. Cypher. I lost to Cypher. But rules are rules. Here, take this. Cypher got 3100 for winning. Cypher received the balance badge from Dad. Okay, we don't even get leader Norman. Whatever. I guess it makes more sense. With that badge, the defense of all your Pokémon will increase. Pokémon that know the move, the HM move Surf, will be able to travel over water. This is my gift to you, Cypher. I'm sure you can use it correctly. Obtain the TM42. That is facade, and it is the key to making Lombardi a force to be reckoned with. TM42 contains facade. It doubles the power of moves if the Pokémon is poisoned, paralyzed, or burned. It might be able to turn a bad situation into an advantage. Or it can turn a Pokémon with guts, like Lombardi, who is also normal type, into a real powerhouse, because guts boost, instead of uh, a burned Swallow, gets a gus gets its attack boosted by 50% from guts, Facade doubles from 70 power to 140 power, and if you give it a Silk Scarf, that gets an additional 10% bonus, plus the same type of attack bonus, so it hits like a truck. It's honestly stronger than Return at that point. This is the gym leader. I can't express how upset I am. But as a father, it makes me both happy and a little sad. It's odd. Oh yes. Wally's parents came calling earlier. They said that they had something they wanted to give you, Cypher. Well, I guess uh, that just leaves... Uh, well, I guess that takes care of the main event for this, but let's quickly go back in here. I didn't mean to leave right then. Let's talk to Dad, see what else he has to say. Cypher, you should go visit your mother every so often. I'm going to stay here and redouble my training. It would, be, it would bother me as a trainer to not avenge my loss to you, Cypher. All right, well, we'll definitely want to go check out Little Root Town, considering how close we are. But first things first, let's get out of the gym. And honestly, I think uh, let's just, you know what, I'll worry about that TM. I'll probably tr teach that to, teach that facade TM to Lombardi off screen. But first, let's go into the PC. We're going to quickly... Shift around, and we're going to trade out Cujo for Urbosa. We're going to trade out uh, Charlie for Skarmory. I mean, uh, trade out uh, Charlie for Darude. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to trade out Adamantine for Merc, but this is only temporary. I'm going to be doing a bit of things before we uh, get, up the move, get a move on. So let's quickly go over to my item, the item slots, and we're going to use these rare candies because I have trained up uh, Darude and Merc. We're going to start off by evolving Merc, because by getting him to level 30, he will evolve. Merc wants to learn rap. I don't really care about rap. What? Merc is evolving? Yep. Okay.
Congratulations, your Merc evolved into Tentacruel. And once again, trying to learn the move Wrap. Don't really care. And we're going to use another Earth Candy on Darude. And I'll go over Darude a bit in just a bit after we deal with this, because I wanted to just get him to level 30 so that he also evolves. Going from a little trap inch to the ground dragon type Vibrava. Now, normally this wouldn't happen until he reached level 35, but I figure it might as well uh, take care of this now. Uh, just to quickly go over uh, Darude, he is rather good. By evolving, he gets the Dragon subtyping at the cost of some of his stats, so kind of good, kind of bad. He also gets Levitate for an ability, which is pretty good. And I didn't go over Darude when we caught him, but I wanted to focus on the gym rather than taking a look at him. But I actually got a very good Trap Inch from the Route 111 Desert. As you can see, a Naughty Nature, so that's plus attack minus special defense, and then what you don't see is his IVs, and I have got to say this has got to be like the luckiest catch I could have gotten. He has two perfect IVs, and they're in the best stats total for this family. It is a perfect IV in attack of 31, and a perfect IV in speed of 31. So, beyond excellent. Like, I could not be happier. And even then, his special attack IV, which is the other thing I would have wanted to be high. Well, not the highest, it is a very high IV of 20, so he is pretty solid. I could not have gotten a better trap inch if I tried, I don't think. Not without... Oh, it's, I guess, messing with the RNG in some way, but I... You don't really do that. Anyway, let's just quickly... Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to put a Merc back in the PC, so just give me a second. Because we're going to actually have Sly Cooper come along. And first things first, I'm going to actually go into my key items and we're going to select, we're going to register the old rod. And we're going to go over to this pond right here and try and re uh, reel up a Pokemon. And of course I end up getting a Magikarp rather than what I was hoping for. And I need to switch off a of forest. Let's quickly swap to Arbosa, who I also trained up to the current level, to the level cap for Norman, even though I didn't intend to use her for Norman. Okay, come on, let's hopefully get it this time. No. I'm mainly doing this because there's another Pokemon I want to catch on a later route, but we don't want to risk running into the Pokemon that we can get here. Come on. Okay, this is getting a little annoying, but at least... We're having a, a little bit of luck. Okay. No. Alright, you know what? Let's see, one more try, and then, if not... Hmm. Let's try this spot, then. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, finally. 
a Goldeen. And I know that it's weak, but I'm not catching this uh, to use it. I'm catching it so that I can get a better Pokemon on a different route. And since we haven't caught anything here before, might as well get this out of the way here. So I'm just going to paralyze it and throw an Ultra Ball at it. All right, well, that was easy. Goldene's data was added to the Pokedex. I'll just throw, throw on a random nickname for you. First thing that came to mind. Laguna. Okay, with that, we're going to uh, quickly... Uh, deregister the old rod, register the mock bike once again, and we'll just quickly make our way back to Little Root, uh, Little Root Town just to go see our mom since our dad decided to encourage us to do that. And you definitely want to do this because if we talk to her... Oh, did dad give you that badge? And here's something from your mom. Obtain the amulet coin. That is a very good held item. Don't push yourself too hard, dear. You can always come home. Go for it, honey. Uh, that held item will double the prize money you receive from Pokemon battles with, against trainers. So it's definitely something to keep in mind for when you decide to f uh, fight trainers. I'm definitely going to be making good use of it for something that we'll have coming up, but we'll save that for a later point. And I should probably throw up a repel just because there's still a bit more that I want to do in this episode. So let's quickly uh, go to my items. Oh yeah, repels are going to be down here at the bottom. Just bought ten of those off screen so that we can quickly make our way back. Okay, good. And we're going to quickly go up here to Wally's house in Pelberg City and talk to his dad. Hi there, Cypher. Our Wally's become very healthy since he went to Verdon Turf Town. We owe it all to you. When Wally left town, you helped him catch a Pokemon, right? I think that made Wally really happy. Actually, not just Wally. It made me, his father, happy too. Happy that he's got such a great friend as you. This isn't a bribe or anything, but I'd really like you to have this. Obtain the HMO3. Okay, that is a rather useful HM. If your Pokemon can surf, you'll be able to go all sorts of places. All right, well, let's quickly teach that that HM to one of our Pokemon. I know at least one Pokemon that can learn it in our team, that being Sly Cooper. So now he's officially an, an HM slave. We'll just get rid of Headbutt because that's the only move we can replace. And... Now, let's see, we've been on for about 20, uh, about 29 minutes, so let's just quickly bypass the tall grass. And, I, you know what, I will see you guys when I reach Mauville by going through here. So, see you then. Alright, now that we're back in Mauville, oh, I see that we have Watson here, but don't get me wrong, we're not going to be making much progress going forward, we're just going to quickly take care of something, and then I'll be ending things off, so we're just going to uh, go onto the water here, and we're actually going to throw up another repel. I did use one to just get through Rust Turf Tunnel without any issue, and we're not going to talk to you, but we're going to talk to this guy. Hmm, a good rod is really good. Wouldn't you agree? Hmm. We're of identical minds. 
Here, hmm. take this good rod. Obtain the good rod. That is an improvement to our fishing rod, which will be able to help us catch better types of water Pokemon. Wherever there's water, try your luck at fishing. And that is the last thing that I want to do. I know we have Gabby and Ty right there, and we could progress further by heading east, but we're actually going to be going back to a bunch of different areas. When I start the next episode, we'll probably be in Route 114, west of Fall Arbor Town, for a very particular reason, and then we're going to make our way back toward the... the uh, back toward Pelberg City through Meteor Falls, and then use Surf to explore to our heart's content. So, I will end things off here. Until next time, stay gold. Playback sequence terminated. Transmission disconnected.